Well, amen. It's good to be with you. My name is Joel, and I'm one of the pastors, and uh, I get to bring the Word of God today. And I've got a couple friends up here um, that actually, before I do anything else, I'll come back to them later on, but I'll go ahead and introduce them so you can go ahead and know. If you don't uh, already uh, have, if you haven't met him before, this is Pastor Dan Vanderworker, um, and he is our executive pastor of ministries here. And in the essence, what this guy does is he looks at all the different areas of ministry within the church, and he helps to pour fuel on those areas of ministry to make sure that they're linking together and that they're tethered. Otherwise, we would have even more things happening here every day of the week, and the building would burn down. Um, so anyway, that's what this guy does. And this is Andrew Honeycutt. He, is, uh, he actually works every day with me, so please pray for him, uh, my executive assistant. And he really helps to push on the ministry as a whole with me. And um, I, as I was introduced Introducing him in the first service, I recognize that you probably know more about my life than my wife does, um, which is scary. Um, so, but they re- he really does an amazing job um, helping to look at all the different pieces of the, of the puzzle here at Chapel Point and tethering together as well. So, um, just so you can know these guys, are you ready for the Word of God? Yeah, it's going to, I tell you what, today is an amazing passage as we're in a series called Hebrews chapter 11, Admire admire. We're looking at the heroes of faith, and we're going to try to go ahead and finish out the rest of this chapter today in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, what I want to do is I just, let's just go ahead and jump in. You know how we are. Let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. And you saw a video on it, hopefully, earlier, uh, just a couple of days ago. And I, I'd like just to go ahead and, and call this out. And when I leave a blank, uh, you fill it in, okay? Does that work for you guys? So let's just go ahead and throw this up on the screen. Hebrews 11, 32 through 40. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Samson. This is so fun for me. I've been waiting for this. Okay, so for, <laughs> I am a sinner. Um, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through conquered kingdoms, So let's just, let's just start. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Chapel Point today. It's good to have you. I just, I have brutally messed this up. Okay. Enforce justice, obtain promises, stop the mouths of lions, quench the power of, Fire. escape the edge of the, Sword. were made strong out of, Weed. became mighty in, Lord. put foreign armies to, Life. women received back their dead by, Resurrection. some war, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains. And they were, they were sawn in two. They were killed with a They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made. It's the word of God. You may be seated. As we're looking at this passage, again, the Hebrews rent to a bunch of Jewish Christians, individuals who are claiming Jesus Christ. A bunch of other people are coming in and saying, Hold up, like these are people of faith as well saying, can't you just go back to the Old Testament ways of doing things? Just do it. Hey, I need to make my sacrifices. I need to do this. 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 And just be done with it. I keep the rules and be done with it because this whole transformed follower of Jesus thing isn't working out very well for us. And you're starting to annoy people. You're irritating people. Can, can you not just stop? And so here's the author of Hebrews writing to the um, people and saying, hey, listen, you can do this. Here are some examples of people of faith. So he's been calling out people like Noah and Enoch and others, right? Caleb. And he's been calling Noah and Abraham and he's calling them out and saying, here's some examples of faith. Well, now he's calling out some others. Um, and these are some messed up people, aren't they? I, th- th- these are some messed up individuals where you're, you're seeing though, and you're going to learn right away. Get this if you don't get anything else. A weak faith is better, is greater than unbelief. A weak faith 
is greater than unbelief. Because here are individuals that at times had weak faith. And yet now they're being called out as examples for us to learn from, to live according to some of the things that they lived by, right? So a weak faith is greater than unbelief. And these are individuals who have areas of weaknesses and failures, but they're still committed in their faith. Anybody here have a weak area in their life? Raise your hand. All right, every one of us. And yet God used these people to do amazing things. And now the author of Hebrews is writing and saying, hey, learn from these guys. Because a weak faith is still greater than unbelief. And so we're going to join with you because as they, you, you do need to know, as, as the author is calling out to the reader and he's letting them know about these stories, they would have automatically said, oh yeah, Gideon. Oh yeah, Samson. Oh yeah, Jephthah, right? They would have just called, as soon as that name was mentioned, um, they would know who it is. And in knowing who it is, they would then be able to just put a a story with it. And so I want to remind you of some of these stories. These guys are going to help me with it. I'm going to call out the scripture, call out the name, and then they're going to tell you who they were, all right? So it tells us, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon. Write these down, by the way. Like you might want to write down Gideon in just a few. We got some general notes for you to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So for time would fail me to tell of Gideon. Yeah. In Judges 6 to 7, we see that Gideon was the weakest person in the weakest tribe and that he had, he doubted his call from God. And yet God still used him to destroy idols and to defeat the Midianite army. So for time would tell, uh, fail me to tell of Barak. Barak. Barak was a military commander of 10,000 men. He trusted the prophet Deborah, and he went into battle and defeated the Canaanites. For time would fail me to tell of Samson. Samson is somebody who was used to defeat the Philistines, and yet we know that God had more intended for him than he even recognized. But what he did uh, was something in terms of giving in to the advances of Delilah in Judges chapter 13 through 16. And so by giving in to the advances of Delilah, he didn't recognize God's full potential for him, but yet God used him anyway. For time would fail me to tell of Jephthah. His mother was a prostitute. His father was a warrior. He was disowned by his family, banished from his home, and yet invited back to help lead an army. And the scriptures tell us that it was in the power of the Spirit that he was victorious. For time would fail me to tell of David. Oh, David, one of my favorites. As a shepherd boy, David killed Goliath, defeated the Philistines, and David was not perfect, but he was a man after God's own heart. He was humble, he was a warrior, and he became the second king over Israel. For time would fail me to tell of Samuel and the prophets. Uh, An Old Testament prophet would receive messages from God, mainly concerning events that would take place in the future. And in some ways, a prophet was an advocate or a mediator between God and the people. One of the examples um, that would be used uh, for these individuals is that God gave even, like think about a Jonah. God gave this message to Jonah to go to Nineveh, right? And to share with him. He didn't want to go, but he went anyway. And he shared in about five English words, a message from God, and they all repented. Um, and so time would tell, fail me to tell of these individuals. So these are all people who made pretty big mistakes, you think about Gideon, he made pretty big mistakes. You, you think about Samson and giving in to the seduction, the seducing of a Delilah rather than really giving himself fully to God. He made pretty big mistakes. David certainly made mistakes that you spoke of, Andrew, right? And we see this over and over again, and yet God still used them. Friends, we've all made mistakes, but God can still use you. And sometimes we get so caught up in living according to our past failures that we never live according to what God could do in us now. And I am not by any means, one thing nobody has ever called me, if you've been churched in your life, I am not a prosperity gospel guy at all. And sometimes what we're going to see and what we even learn today is that this is a This is a passage in which helps us 
to understand the significance of our faith and that it's not only about us, that God still wants to use us to do greater things than we've ever imagined before. And for some of us, we need to stop seeing only our previous failures and we need to recognize how God is wanting to continue to use us as we move forward. Some of our struggle is that you are allowing the people around you to constantly remind yourself of your previous failures. And I don't know why I need to say it, but I'm going to say it right now. If you have made a mistake in the past, raise your hand if you've ever made a mistake in the past. If you've made a mistake in the past and you've gone to someone and said, and you sincerely apologize, and they still will not let you live that down, it is no longer on you. That is on their heart and the hardness of it. So live in freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Because there's a lot of us, we would rather someone live in captivity because we live in captivity. And so we wish that upon other people. And you know what people who live in captivity and their own failures and their own insecurities love? They love to hang out with other people who are the same. And if you start living in that freedom and if that if you start living in that victory that is found in Jesus Christ, honestly, it ticks other people off. But guess what? Your hard heart can't keep me from having a heart that lives for Jesus Christ. And so here are individuals who had a lot of failures in their life, but yet God still used them to do remarkable things. And what you're going to see here really um, in this next section is somewhat, Pastor, it's a resume. It's a resume of these individuals going, here's how they experienced victory over hardship. So by faith, these are, you're about to hear some things that you go, man, if I could have this kind of day, this kind of week, it's going to be a good week. And so that's what you're going to see here. As we see by faith, some of these guys were victorious over hardship. They were victorious over hardship. And so this is what it says for us in this passage It says, who through faith, talking about all these people, conquered kingdoms. Yeah, we're reminded of David again. David was the last one chosen. No one expected him to be the one, the youngest of his family. And yet he is the one that today we say a man after God's own heart. He is the one that conquered kingdoms, that conquered Jerusalem. Yeah, it's a good day when by faith you can conquer kingdoms. Right? It's a good day when by faith you can enforce justice. Yeah, this really hits home right now, right? King Josiah, Elijah, and Elisha, they all laid their lives on the line to confront the corrupt cultures of their times. They proclaimed God no matter what the culture around them was saying. It's a good day when by faith you can obtain God's promises. I think of Caleb. I think of Gideon. I think of Barak, all people who obtained God's promises. One, the people that we know the best for obtaining the promises of God would probably be Moses, who had to declare to Pharaoh, guess what? It's time for you to let the people go. And he saw that come to fruition as they left and they crossed the sea together and retreated out of Egypt. So they would have heard, man, by faith, they obtained to the promises of God. They saw it happening. And also by faith, they saw the and um, the stopping of the mouths of lions. Yeah, we see that Daniel, he stood on conviction. He worshiped the one true God and was protected and vindicated by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When by faith they saw the quenching of the power of fire. Yeah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they faced the fiery furnace knowing that they laid hope to an eternal hope that was only found in God. By faith, it tells us that they escaped the edge of the sword. You think about David escaping the sword of Goliath. You also think about the, um, David escaping the sword of Saul, others as well. Moses escaping uh, the sword of Pharaoh because Pharaoh wanted to put his life to an end. We see people who escaped the edge of the sword by their faith. We saw other people that by faith, out of the weakness, they were made strong. Yeah, you see, Sarah, that because of God she was able to have a child in her old age. And you see Gideon, we're reminded of Gideon that in his insecurities, that because of God, he went from being an insecure farmer to a mighty warrior. You see people that by faith became valiant in battle. Yeah, King David, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, they all trusted God over chariots and horses and were mighty and victorious in battle. And then you see people who, by faith, uh, women who received their dead, 
raised to life again. And it's now the triumph of faith over suffering. And they saw this. They experienced that very thing. Um, In the Old Testament, you think about people like the widow of Zarephath and others. So guys, thank you so much. Um, This is something where, here's Hebrews 11. Remember, he's writing to a bunch of individuals who are trying to live by Jesus Christ, trying to live by who God wants them to live according to the the, the saving power of Christ. And yet they are enduring all this hardship. And he's going, no, 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 you can still do it. Look, here are some examples of faith. And I tell you what, I want to have that kind of faith. I want to I want to be able to declare this type of faith in my life. Like if somebody says, "What does your faith mean?" Like how have you encountered faith in your own life? Wouldn't you like to say, "Well, here's what my faith means. Um, I have conquered kingdoms," um, and then you just kind of like flip your hair, which I don't have any of it. But like you're like, "Oh yeah, look at me. I've enforced justice. This is what my faith means to me." Wouldn't that be a good day? I, hey, by faith, what else have you done? I yeah, it was yesterday. I stopped the mouths of lions right? Oh, by faith. Oh, edge of the sword. I got that taken care of. Like I escaped it. It's, it's, it's no big deal. It's an easy day. Um, I was valiant in battle. Hey, in my weaknesses, I've been made strong, right? That's the kind of faith that we often teach as a church. Like that's what's happened is we teach that type of faith. Hey, hey kids, like, and we gather them around, right? I've got several kids. I'm like, hey guys, this is what God wants to do in your life. He wants to use you to do great things and he's gonna help you overcome your weaknesses and he's gonna do this and he's gonna help you conquer all of your enemies. And he's gonna, anybody ever said these things before? Yes? Really? Like don't, isn't that the type of faith we teach? Otherwise, why are we here? So I go, man, this is the kind of faith that you need to have is is the type of faith that will let you conquer kingdoms and let you recognize that in your weakness that that you can also know his strength, that you can be valiant in battle no matter what, that you can obtain and step into the promises of God. And we want to live like that. But let me tell you, we have cheapened faith. We have cheapened faith. Because when you can obtain the promises of God and you can, con- you can conquer kingdoms and you can see them, the mouths of lions stopped and you can be made strong in your weaknesses, I tell you what, that makes you feel good and you wake up the next day like, let's do that again. Let, let's, let's do that again. I, I would love to always live according to that type of faith and always see those types of things happening. But guess what? That's not always reality. Because the next part of scripture here is is what really gets me. In fact, I can tell you there are six different times. I came over here twice yesterday. I came here a couple times Friday. Every time I was working on this passage and I just keep going and going, I struggled to work on this part of the scripture. So I'm going to do my very best to get through this part of scripture because it's something that we don't teach very well as the church. And yet here's Hebrews 11 Heroes of faith. And this isn't the type of faith we always demonstrate now. We speak of the one that says, yeah, I'm going to be victorious over hardship. But what we're about to see is that by faith, some were victorious in the midst of hardship. When you look at the end of chapter 11, you've got people who are victorious over hardship and you've got people who are victorious in the midst of hardship. And that latter one, we're not very good at sometimes. That what we do is when we have to be faithful in the midst of hardship, we often turn our back on God. And so listen to what this says again. And I'm going to go to verse 35 and start there because it, it'll help us. It says, women received back their dead by resurrection. And then it just switches. Like there's like a, like all of a sudden, oh, wait. Right? Does anybody want to say, I've experienced faith by conquering kingdoms? Raise your hand. That's a cool thing. Yes? Yeah? You, I will get you to participate. We'll go to shovel snow together. Let's go. <laughs> but then it says, this is all by faith. So by faith, some were tortured. Oh, 
Oh, we don't. We, we, we don't talk about that very much, do we? Do you know thousands of people have died in the last few days around the world because of, simply because they believe in Jesus Christ? It's a real thing. It's a real thing. By faith, it says, some were tortured. By faith, it says, they refused to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. They, they were not going to abandon their faith. Their, their release would have come because they abandoned their faith. But they were not going to abandon their faith. They were going to hold on to their faith. And so they were being tortured. It also tells us that others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. I don't know about you, but not many of us, if somebody comes to us and says, what does your faith look like? You go, oh man, it's all about just enduring the mocking and the torturing and the, and the chains and the imprisonment. It says, by faith that some were stoned, that they were sawn in two, that they were killed with a sword, that they went about in skins of sheep and goats and destitute, afflicted and mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. The author is about to let us know, and listen, we need more people of faith who are willing to endure the torment, who are willing to walk through the hardship in the midst of suffering, and many of you are doing it. I know some of you right now, I'm in a, a wonderful seat to see God work, and some of you are struggling in your marriage big time, and you're still, you're still in it, and you are fighting for it. And I can tell you stories of people who six months ago, they never thought they would still be married, but they're still married today. And God has worked in those marriages and God has blessed those marriages. And now they stand together in the name and in the power of Jesus Christ. I can tell you people right now that are walking through cancer, terminal cancer, and yet they are holding their head high and they're declaring the name and the power of Jesus Christ in the midst of it. Because they know what it is to have the victory of Jesus Christ, not only over hardship, but in the midst of hardship. And these are the people of faith that we need just to recognize and go, wow, we need more of that. Right? It says the people who are being mocked. Well, Isaac was mocked by Ishmael and Samson was mocked by the Philistines. We know that. People in chains and in imprisoned. Joseph was imprisoned by his faith even as he worked, Right? For Potiphar and Potiphar's wife advanced toward him and he said, no way, I'm not going to uh, do anything there. And so they throw him in prison. It's said that Isaiah was sawn in two for his faith in God. People were tempted and mutilated and strangled and burnt alive. We know that many of the prophets in Elijah's day, that they were slain with the sword. We know that Elijah wore humble clothing and he walked around in sheepskins and goatskins. But guess what? The world is not worthy of such people of faith. And they're certainly not friendly to them. David and Elijah and other prophets, even under the leadership of Obadiah, found their homes in dens and caves. You think about David hiding out from Saul in caves. You think about Elijah in 1 Kings 17 through 19, hiding out from Jezebel and all of these stories. But these aren't the stories we speak about. And yet here's Hebrews 11, heroes of faith. We want to be the ones who obtain to the promises. We want to be the one who, ones who conquer kingdoms. But what if God has asked us to be the ones who are willing to undergo torment and suffering and affliction? What if we're the ones that God is calling to stand in the midst of all of the hardship and still declare the power and the might of Jesus Christ? You see, the church, I will tell you, as a whole, the capital C church has sometimes done a poor job in letting you know that our faith is often determined by when we are willing to stand in the midst of hardship and never release our faith. That is typically when we can know the depth. That is when we can know the magnitude and the true capacity of our faith. 
These are people who endured. And they didn't receive all that was expected, but they would die with their faith intact. They would not step away from God because they recognized that everything here was temporary, but they were living for something that was eternal. That's what real faith is. And today what we do is I go, man, how many of us have stepped away from faith when it's something that has happened in our life so much smaller than any of the things that we've read today? Somebody recently came to me and it was, um, wasn't my kid, it was just a guy who was really upset. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Well, I'm taking classes and I failed a test and I'm just angry at God. I'm like, why are you angry at God? How much did you study? He's like, well, I just prayed really hard. I said, oh my gosh, like, come on. We get angry at God and turn from God so much. Why? Because we think God, we think our faith is about God doing something for us today to meet our needs rather than being in a relationship with him and that no matter what the world may bring, we will give glory to his name. We've gotten it wrong. They wouldn't step away from their faith no matter what. They received the tormenting. And, the, and I know that this is not a message in which you go, oh yeah, man, that was amazing. I need to bring all my lost friends. No, you need to introduce them to the proper type of faith. You need to let them understand that faith in Jesus Christ allows you to have the strength to walk through that so that for eternity, we can be in a relationship with him. And if you don't think that the eternity with Jesus Christ is greater than the temporary of this world, man, have you got it wrong. Some of you need to recognize that you're, I know that some of you, you're walking through the hardship right now. You're going, no, no, Joel, you don't know my life. It is so hard right now. And what I would tell you is this. Thank you. If you're suffering right now, if you are hurting right now, but you are walking with your faith intact, that you are still giving glory to God, Thank you for being a witness that will possibly be an addendum one day to Hebrews chapter 11. We know that God's done writing his word, but I hope you know what I mean by that. Thank you. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. We look at this passage and we see like over and over in, in the book of Hebrews, he, the author is writing, he's like, hold fast, hold fast, hold fast. Don't let go. He's like, don't let go, don't let go. I made, I made the mistake yesterday um, of going to rebounders. And it's, it's, the mistake wasn't going to rebound. Three of my kids are on the youth trip right now. And so we only have one kid with us. And that's like, my kids love it when it's just one kid and them because they know they pretty much get anything they want. And so they, the only thing that my youngest asked for, he's like, can we go to rebounders and can both? I was like, sure, let's go. That's an easy one. And then he said, well, I want you both, you and mom to jump. I was like, no, huh, huh, huh. Um, so I'm there, I'm doing my flips and everything. And I'm like, um, <laughs> You don't believe me? I was there? Come on now. I went to the hospital after, but I was doing them. Um, but they had this like obstacle course thing, like where you run through it and you have to jump up and, and grab stuff. And I have a bum shoulder. And, and, and so I, my son's like, hey, you can do this section. And he's doing the section where he just runs across. He's like, you do the section where you have to do all the monkey bars and everything like that. I'm like, that's not fair. Like he's 10. Come on. So anyway, I'm doing it and I grab it. I'm like, I'm not letting go. And then I was like, I'm letting go and I fell and I got through two. Two, that's all I did. But yet in Hebrews, it's all about holding. You're not gonna let go no matter what. You're not gonna let go. You're gonna hold on to your faith in Jesus Christ. You're gonna have a spiritual tenacity that you've never known before. And if you're walking through the hard, if you're walking through the difficulty of physical illness or in a marriage or family or in a relationship or with work, any of the above, keep your faith. And I want to say thank you. You should find hope and encouragement in this passage because he's calling out and letting them know, like, don't you understand that it's all, it's, your faith isn't simply about getting what you want right now. These are people who are willing to die, not getting and, and seeing what God wanted to achieve in that moment, right? It would wait, it would be later on, but they are willing to keep their faith intact. 
Do you have a healthy, full understanding of faith? They knew what it was to hold, fa- to hold fast. Faith isn't always about victory over hardship. Sometimes it's about trusting in the midst of hardship. Faith is holding on even when not seeing what you desire to see happen. Faith is knowing that there's always better in the name of Jesus. Our faith must not be about the temporary things that we can receive, but the eternal relationship that we already have. And so I want to, I want to encourage, like some of you are going, well, I'm still struggling with the whole faith thing. I'm still angry at God because hard things are happening. Guys, hard things happen. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because we live in a sinful, broken world. That's why. And people choose not to be obedient to God. We've got to mature in our understanding of faith. We have to mature in our understanding of what it is to have faith. And then we know that it's typically in the midst of hardship that we learn what type of faith we really have. And many of us today don't really know hardship. We know inconvenience. I'm not speaking to every single person, but as a whole, right? We're, we're not yet being slain here for being believers in Jesus Christ. Do I think it's coming? See, Hebrews 11, it gives us examples of faith, but it's also giving us standards to look at and go, am I living like this? Oh man, I have such a deep faith that I hold on to that in the midst of suffering and mocking and imprisonment and chains and persecution and even death. I will not release my faith in Jesus Christ. That's an example for us right now. And if you need help in doing that and and having faith in the midst of hardship, here's here's something I would encourage you to do. You might want to write this down. This This is something that will just help you to kind of determine where you are. And I, I, I do this somewhat frequently and I need to be reminded. Um, I write down all the ways that I've already seen God work and how God has been working in the last few weeks in my life. What it does is it reminds me of God's presence because when I start writing down, and sometimes it depends on the season I'm in, I would tell you I always have done this. I have not, I go through phases. But sometimes when I start struggling in, in my faith and start struggling in man, I, I start getting, if I start getting angry easily, because I, I don't really get angry. So if I get angry at something that I don't think I should be angry about, I go, what, 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 where am I? Like, what's going on in my heart right now? And so I start writing down all the little things that I've been praying about in my life. And in a few weeks, I start looking back and going, oh yeah, God's done this, God's done this, God's done this. So I start remembering how God has already worked. I start seeing how God has already worked. It's one of the greatest ways that I I examine my faith. But also I remind myself that there's always a better life to come in the name of Jesus. My best life comes when I'm at the feet of Jesus. This isn't my best life. And so by faith, they showed a spiritual tenacity that some of us need to be encouraged by today.
Why? Because if, as we close, I'll remind you that we are provided with something greater, something better. It tells us in 39 through 40, and all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better for them, something better, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Like they knew, right, that they weren't going to see all that God was going to do. <laughs> and yet they still trusted. They knew they would not see all that God was going to do. They would not really obtain to those promises, but they still trusted. They still lived by faith. Their faith was intact and they were tormented and they suffered and they were mocked and they were in prison and they were in chains, but they kept their faith because of who they knew they were made to be and the power of God Almighty. So I'm encouraging you to learn from these friends of ours in Scripture, to learn from these people who went before, who lived out and demonstrated such powerful faith. But I'm also asking you to find encouragement in the fact that no matter what you're walking through, you can endure by faith by faith, by faith. So Lord, I come before you and I ask that you would just give us an opportunity to evaluate where we are by faith, to determine if by faith we are living a life that is worthy and pleasing to you, to help us know that if by faith we are willing to always hold your name where it deserves to be as priority in our life. That by faith, by faith, God, we will hold fast to your goodness and to your promises. Whether we see them come to fruition or not, God, may we be faithful 